okay. Now, it's a great moment. It's always a great moment. You, know, you get all your morning stuff done and you sit down and you say, it is time to work on a watch. Always nice. Always nice. December 82. That's early. No, I think the earliest ones were November 82. Or was it 81? I can't ever remember. This is, uh, this is a nice watch. You can see it's got a nice bit of dirt underneath the rotating ring, which is always good. It means it was never touched. Bracelet's dirty. We knew that. I don't, uh, there's a little bit of wear right there. It's rare for Seiko bracelets to wear. These do, however. You can see you got a little stretch in there, but I've, I've seen them where they're just coming to pieces. Like this one, I can, I can tighten that up. That's okay. The bracelet's pretty short. Uh, I don't know what length you need. If you need an extra link, I don't know that I have one. I'd have to dig. Loom's a little discolored. I can clean that up with my Vintaloom. I'll clean it up a little bit. Your dial loom is fine. I see a few marks on the surface of the 30 minute register right around the hand and there's a couple little teeny bits of like... So somebody's been in this before. Someone has serviced this before. There's another little dark mark. Oh no, wait, that's just a shadow. Never mind. Insert's pretty good, original pip. Yeah, it's original. What the heck? No battery leak. This one's definitely hazy. You can see, because uh, you remember the other one was really bright and clean. Um, so let me let me pull this. Hang on. Yeah, this this watch had a it had an active life. Um, the you've got a couple bends here. Um, somebody somebody bent that strap backwards. I will do my best to flatten this. I always want to be careful when I'm working on these because these are spot welded to the rest of the bracelet. And if you really honk on these, those welds will break, uh, which we don't want. So I, I will be careful about that. I will be careful about that. Let's, um, I want to, let me pull this. I want to, I'm not, normally I would pull the back. When I do, do, do. I'm going to do my usual thing. I don't like changing my procedures. I, I do things in a certain way. And a lot of what I do is probably down to muscle memory. And that could be a good thing or a bad thing. But I like doing things a particular way. Ooh. Wow, that screw was completely loose. Wow, and that was that's the ground screw. That's completely loose. You have this loose, you're going to have intermittent connections in there. That's not going to work at all. Loose. Loose. Yep. These are all barely tightened down. Wow, that's wild. That is wild. Yeah, look at that. I, I barely had to touch it and it was loose. Yep, loose. loose and all of these things push down on connections because they aren't these things aren't like bolted bolted together the connections touch each other because they're forced to by these screws and if the screws are loose then the connections are wow that one was really loose the connections are intermittent and then you're just gonna it's not gonna perform <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I don't see any water inside. It just looks hazy. Yeah. We got, I think we got a little bit of moisture that came in here through this crown. Because you can see there's a bit of discoloration there. That looks good. Look at your circuit. Looks perfect. Great. Somebody had been fiddling with the adjustments on this one too, because it was not in the default setting. I will be curious to see what we see. Okay, now, the reason I like doing this with the movement inside the case like this um, especially at this point is that I just, you just do not want anything moving around because I've got to pull the four screws for the coils and you just don't, you do not want anything moving. Oh God, that was loose too. That was loose. Did this person like make a living riding motorcycles or like running a, God, completely loose, running a jackhammer or something? That's just crazy. That one was almost snug, but it was still easy to turn. Okay. We just want to stay away from the connection side. I get these out by just gripping that little plastic separator on the other side and you always leave the coils in the same orientation they were inside the watch so you know which one went where. There are two different kinds. I just like to put the same coils back in the same space. Okay, it is diffused. Now, I'm going to pull that movement. You can see there's the stem release, and that's the hacking lever, by the way. Or that's part of the hacking lever. It, it disconnects the power through that circuit. Usual thing. Old gross gasket. Okay, let's get this out of here. Come on, come on, oh, oh gosh, come on, there we go, right, I'm going to have to really rip that thing apart, mm-hmm, <laughs> want to see what the marks are on this dial right here. We're in this 12 hour register. Okay, it looks like it's just uh, some kind of grease on the dial. Hey, that's great news. Excellent. Cool. Okay. Okay, look, and those two spots are gone too. Excellent. Okay, good. So the sub register hands are good. This tip of this one got pushed down, but I'll straighten it. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Good. So your dial is as it should be. That makes things a lot easier. Always whenever I see, you know, these chronograph hands where they have paint chips and stuff out of them. I always wonder about who was in, but they were just dirty and that's okay. All right, I'm gonna pull the hands and, and get this ripped apart and, uh, and we'll come back. Okay, every single screw 
no, I'm sorry. There was one screw inside the movement that wasn't totally loose. Other than that, every single screw, every single bridge, everything, every single one was loose. Craziest thing in the world. Um, it would explain, uh, the, the gentleman must have worn the watch just every, every single day, just relentlessly. Yeah. So now we got the case. Look at the filth. Moral of the story is, if you're going to wear your watch all the time, take some time out of your day to clean it. Because that's why the bracelet was wearing, because it got all that crap in it. Um, and then it turns into this sort of abrasive situation. <laughs> At least this rotating ring isn't welded in place with Grok. I have definitely seen that. I'm looking for the cutout notch. It should be right here, but over here for some reason. Look at that. And somebody tried to get that thing off before. See that boink right there? There's the notch for the thing. These can be really tough if they're really welded in place. They can really fight you, but not this one. Look at that. When I dream when I dream Nice and stiff. Sometimes, I mean, you get you get one of these. It's been the person has just worn it and worn it and worn it, like worn it in water and all this other kind of stuff, and they've never cleaned it. These these rings will be so glued in place that uh, you have to use an Omega style remover, which is not just one blade like this. It's actually, it's all these fingers that come in from all around it and goes kunk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when something's this dirty, I'm gonna need to go through and, and just hand clean everything to try to get the initial guck out of there. It makes it much easier to get it truly clean and then we're just a lot happier. And that's that's good, you know? Happy is good. Okay, I'm going to get the crystal out and then we'll pull the battery. Out the... Okay, crystal's out. It's worn. I mean, I have replacements. These aren't nearly as hard to find as the 300Ws for the Gen 1s. So I have those. That's not a problem. All right. We got to get these buttons out of here. No more fooling around. And then I have to hand clean this case. And then we can start climbing the mountain out. It's always interesting when you pull one of these cases apart. I always think, I mean, there's got to be layers of information buried in all this crap on this watch. And like, if you really knew your business, you could like look at the pollen, look at the, look at the, the sample of the pollutants that the watch was around or whatever. I mean, heck, I bet you could probably DNA match this to the, to the original owner now with the DNA genetic databases that are around. They can find serial killers. They certainly, certainly can find, hopefully, somebody who owned this Seiko 7A. Be like, dude, we've come all this way. We've done all this work. We have to ask you, why didn't you clean your watch? God, can you imagine? Especially if you had like, you know, like TV cameras. Yee! <laughs> Look at that. It's got this, uh... Oh, you can't see it. Th 
the uh, see the sort of the shiny slimy black stuff there uh, that's the um, seal degrading into goo doesn't happen very often yikes wow come on Yeah, that's going to be fun taking that apart. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Basic, basic scrub down, and then I want to look at it very closely. I don't think there's any issues. Yikes. I remember once I pulled apart a watch that a gentleman had clearly worn for a very long time, and all the fuzz in it, for the, well, most of the fuzz was um, wool fibers like reds and blacks. Like the gentleman wore a lot of like wool blazers or something maybe. In case anybody cares, I am, I, I am humming a song from an American band called Lord Huron. Really cool stuff. It's got this like, like this country twang thing going on, but this old school country, not like, you know, young country, modern country stuff. This is just like old, old country, which I like. Okay, so I'm gonna go over this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand clean. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me take all this thing apart and let's get cleaning. Uh, I'm gonna come back when uh, all this is. I have everything cleaned up and then we're ready to reassemble. Okay, I'm mostly back together. Everything's just as, oh, just as clean as it can possibly be. Uh, what the hell? I don't know why I'm doing this one right now, but whatever. Now this time all these screws are going to be firmed down.
sure we don't got any fuzzies. Nobody wants, nobody wants no fuzzies. Oh, uh, it's the most important critical piece of the puzzle. Don't put this back. Ooh, doggy. And we're gonna, it was cranked off at an angle. Uh, so we are gonna put it back to a default setting, which is basically straight up and down. Like this, basically pointing at this plastic diddly, or one next to it. Oh wait, talk about forgetting stuff. Boy, without a circuit, I'm not going to be able to do a darn thing. Good. Okay, so now yeah, I put a screw right in the middle of there. Hold everything down. It's crazy that every screw is loose. It's wild. I'm like, did this guy ride motorcycles for a living? Because if you look at the bracelet too, it's got uh, it's got a ton of positional wear. Like the tops of the links, the faces of the links in certain places are worn deeply uh, because of rubbing against other parts of the bracelet. It's just, uh, it's not something I see very often. Somebody was subject to a lot of vibration. Oh, I did get your email um, uh, no I don't remember I'm sorry I forgot I think I'm getting confused This time, we are going to have them nice and firm, and we are going to get good connections on everything. Darn it, why didn't I get out two of those batteries when I had them out a couple days ago? Blarf. Okay. Nope, wrong, 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 no, no, no. Where did I put, oh, they're right here. Is that them? No, that's not them, that's the wrong ones. That's not them either. Uh, boy, I'm amazing. Hang on a second. Okay. Once again. Okay. 
I'm just looking at things generally, don't mind me. Yeah, I mean, it's ticking, I'm sorry, it's ticking over. I was just looking at something else. This is time counting. So that's the upper, upper pinion there for that. Upper. This is the wheel that the minute, the second, running second hand is on. You can see it going. So cool. So now, now it is time to think about Mr. Time Grapher. Okay no idea what we're going to find. Always a mystery. This is still in the same settings as yesterday, so let's see what's up. This is, you know, about a third of a second a day gaining. I'm just waiting here. When you when you do these things, you do different gate times. It, it's the number of ticks that it counts, and then it averages out. Uh, you can make it, but the number of it's there's some math that goes in it. I like to run a couple cycles through just to make sure it's accurate. It looks like it's holding steady. That's a good sign, actually. So let me adjust this down. This discriminator is nowhere near as fine as the 7548, 7549s, uh, but it, it's the same exact trimmer. It's the same exact one using Grand Seiko. Now, Grand Seiko quartz, literally, it's the exact same one. Check that. <clears throat> okay, so we're getting it tighter. Let's. I want to run for a second gate set. Nine one hundredths of a second per day. We are getting there. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, because the way that these work is it's not like super fine discrimination. It sort of it, it jumps by by chunks, but yet you can turn the the adjuster through every degree, 360. So you can turn and turn and not hit it a spot yet, which is what I did. Because I was trying to be clever. Oops, darn it. Did you stop fighting me? Stop that. Wow, 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 wow. Come on, buddy. What are you doing, man? Come on. Turn. Jesus, P. Okay, let's try that. I bet I've gone too far, and it will have wrapped around, and it will be super, super high, and I'm going to have to go backwards. Yep, I knew it.
it's why you these things they don't they don't have a, a lot of it's easy to if you're messing around in the back it's easy to, to make a change and then you've got a problem okay I gotta go faster Now it finally did wrap all the way around. Let's see if that's correct though. Let's wait for another gate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought that was incorrect. But it put me back exactly where I was before. Nine one hundredths of a second per day gaining. Quite square one, but ooh, was that four? Did I just see four? Let's wait for the next gate. I moved it a tiny amount. I don't know if I'm going to see change or not. It's weird. Yeah, it does these things sometimes. It might be that sometimes I'll find it where there's like a lower or an upper boundary that you can't kind of get tighter than. Um, I see it sometimes. try to get it either down a little tighter or up a little tighter and you, you keep trying to goose it and then it'll flip all the way around and then it goes up. Look, I moved it. I've moved it three times. I bet you I'm going to move it again and it's going to flip around and we'll be like gaining like a minute and 20 seconds, a, a second and something on a day. I barely moved that, so I we might be. Oh, let's see. Darn it! Okay, I moved it just a hair the other direction. Reset. Now we're going gate ten again. What? That's a load of horse pucky. I don't believe that for a minute. Yeah, you see, and you sort of wiggle back and forth. Yeah, it's not gaining. Look at that, see? 
there you go. So that's one of those dividing lines, right? Because it's it's not like a smooth continuum of contacts. It's like a contact, then a space, then a contact, then a space, then a contact, then a space, then a contact. And so it's going to jump a number of seconds each time. So I think this is, I mean, eight one hundredths of a second per day is extremely accurate. But I'm going to leave this, I've, I'm going to start working on something else. This I'm going to leave running, and then uh, I'll test it again before close of the day. Um, probably get it assembled today, and then test again tomorrow. But tomorrow it should be done. But I mean, it's steady. I mean, eight one hundredths of a second per day. That's yeah, very very steady. We'll check it in, but I think we're good. Oh, well, that's running in. Assembled case. Came up pretty clean. I'm not going to do anything with this scratch that was here. Uh, the cure is almost always worse than the, the disease. If I had a media blaster to reproduce this bead blasted finish, I'd, that's what I'd use, but I don't have that, so I'm not going to. I don't know what someone was thinking. I think this button was stuck and somebody had a pair of pliers and they were trying to pull it out and they slipped. I haven't done anything with this, but I will, I would like to take off these ridges. They just shouldn't be there and they make it look worse. Uh, click ball is good, but the click balls on these are always good. First button is in. Here, buttons two and three. And if you could look at look at the original button seals, these rotten, horrible things. These style gaskets, uh, I don't, I can't uh, can't get these anymore. But that's fine. Uh, there's a heavy duty replacement that has a has a nice uh, has a nice um, I don't know what you want to call it. Sort of a peaked. Thing. It's sickly used them uh, uh, in different watches at different times. Book. There's that one. And then we go. Book. There's that one. Get the gone. This is another one of those things where I should probably be doing this inside of a a, uh, a Ziploc bag, but you know, whatever. To keep these in place, I use a little bit of the silicon lubricant. Uh, I put a little bit of extra there uh, on the on the end, and then that'll sort of hold the clip for me. And then when I get the clip on, assuming I don't lose it, I go back in with Rotoco and I get rid of the extra. But it works nicely. One last one. Two out of three ain't bad, they say, but I think three out of three is better. Mm 
Come on now. Come on. Sometimes, I tell you. Mm hmm? This one does not want to go back on. Get yourself up there. There we go. Now, without further ado, Rodico. Mm -hmm. Bloop, 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 bloop. Okay. And there it is. Yeah, and you'll see that this is going to feel nice and light. Okay. Uh, next stage. Getting ready to set the hour and the minute hands, but I thought I'd show off. This is, uh, you remember they were darkened, right? The bloom was darkened on your hands. These original hands. That's the original loom. I just cleaned it up, got rid of the darkness and the product of the chemical reactions between moisture and brass and salt-based loom. So that is original. I also put a clear binder on the back after the cleaning process to hold everything together. Okay. Uh, I have to make, I have to go over to the crystal area there and get myself a, a new crystal for this watch but let's let's watch it roll while I'm doing that Split time. And there it is. All registers are working. Cool. That is good. All right, I'll be back with the crystal. Okay, uh, having some fun. Uh, new gaskets in there, but it sat for a really long time. It was kind of ovaled. Uh, so, but it should be fun. This is something that's fun. Well, at least I think it's fun. I love it. It's backwards. Seiko Service Center. It's still sticking. 310W64GN00. That is correct. New, old, stock, genuine Seiko. How often do we see that anymore? The answer is not very many. <laughs> I only have a few left, very few left. I think these came from Perrin in Canada years ago. Come on. 
One nice thing about these sealed Seiko packets is that the crystals are just beautiful when they come out. Okay, let me just get me a little bit of a spacer there. Hey, though, my hand cleaning shirt came out nice, didn't it? So I now have to think about uh, a bunch of different stuff. I'm cleaning my bench, God. Oh, another thing I have to think about, I need to still repair your bracelet. Uh, it is, uh, that one pin that was loose, it came out. I need to, it's not a big deal, I just need to put it back. Uh, the one question is, um, I'll tighten it up best I can. It's not bad, believe me, I've seen far worse. But uh, again, if you think you're going to need uh, extra links, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to help you out. I don't know that I have any. Um, I will do all I can, and we'll see. But in the meantime, I need to put a fresh rotating ring gasket there that is that is gonna go right on there doesn't that look nice yeah okay so let me get that gasket there's your old rotating ring and there's an old spring bar you're gonna get all your junk parts back came out, I'm pretty darn happy. I hope you were too. Uh, check that alignment on that main sweep. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's really about it. Um, I have checked. I don't appear to have any more of these links. Uh, I will double check, but I, I don't believe that I do. So I'm going to, I will clean this up um, in the sense that I'll make sure that all these links are tight. Uh, uh, I'm going to replace the, the missing pin that's here. It would go right there. Um, and we'll get this, we'll get this going. I will keep poking. You never know. Maybe I've got one in a corner somewhere, but I don't know. Uh, this clicks around oh, very nicely. There. That's a nice looking watch. Very happy that it has that genuine Seiko crystal. That's the way to be. Okay. That's it. Thank you so much.